Hello there my fellow gamers, it's Alex here for Notebook Check Reviews. And today we can finally kick things off for the new year with Nvidia's latest mobile RTX 4000 series cards. While Nvidia's laptop lineup maxed out with the 3080 Ti last year, they introduced a new 4090 SKU for 2023. It is keeping the 3080 Ti's memory configuration, but apart from that, the chip sports increased specs across the board. In our case, we will have a look at the new mobile flagship in XMG's new Neo 60. Since the one we got right here is a pre-production unit, this will not be a full review of the Neo 60, as impressive as it already is. But we will get you all the info about this 16-inch powerhouse in a full review very soon. So for now, please take this into account when we get into our CPU and GPU benchmarks. While our numbers will give you a pretty good idea of what both chips are capable in the XMG and in general, they may be subject to change, but we will do our very best to verify as soon as we get our hands on a final sample. That said, I would still like to give you a rough overview of what is on offer with this one. Our review unit does not only feature the before mentioned 4090, but it also premieres with the Raptor Lake i9-13900HX, 32GB of DDR5-5600 RAM, a 1TB SSD and a 240Hz 16x10 QHD display. As with their Neo 17 from last year we already liked a lot, the new 16-inch variant also comes with a relatively clean chassis that, as soon as you turn off the subtle RGB lighting, looks very clean and very professional. The chassis is very rigid with almost no flex at all and only the hinges could be a bit stiffer to prevent screen wobble. The port situation for this one is also quite solid. On the left you can find a single USB-A and separate mic and headphone jacks and on the right XMG added another pair of USB-A ports and a full size SD card reader. In the back we got a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1 and Thunderbolt 4 with a direct connection to the dedicated GPU. While I would have personally loved to see another USB-C or mini display port, the assortment of I.O. hardly offers any reason to complain. The Neo 16 can also be cooled with XMG's external water cooler, which is what we use for our benchmarks. We talked about it in more detail in our reviews for the Neo 15 and 17 last year, so be sure to check out those through the links up here. For this year the German manufacturer revised the connector and instead of quick disconnects you get self-sealing magnetic connectors on both the Oasis and the laptop itself. So the amount of spill when you take these two apart is almost non-existent. On the display side of things, the Neo offers standard gaming stuff. The 240Hz display gets reasonably bright with almost 380 nits, but unfortunately contrast lags a little. In terms of color gamut coverage and color reproduction, the Neo's panel could also have been a little bit more high-end. While almost 100% for sRGB and around 70% for both DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB are again not too bad for a gaming display, even games pop quite a bit more with higher numbers in this regard. At least the option for a better panel would have been amazing to see. In terms of inputs there is nothing to complain about. The Cherry Low Profile Mechanical Keyboard might be a little loud and very clicky, but it is still one of the best keyboards you can get on a notebook. The touchpad works reliably too, even though I personally really do not like the off-center position. It always takes me ages to get used to it. Alright my friends, let's finally talk about performance. And while the 4090 is the star of the show for today, the new Raptor Lake i9 is no slouch either. While the Oasis is mostly cooling the GPU with an extra heat pipe, please still keep in mind that the AIO might affect temperatures and that we are dealing with a pre-production unit here once again. That said, the new Autolake chip can pretty much top our performance charts, with quite a considerable lead over last year's high-end CPUs. While it shares its 8 hyperthreading performance cores with its direct predecessor, Intel doubled the number of efficiency cores to 16. And it shows, the 3900HX in the Neo 16 can score a 16% lead in our combined performance rating, compared to last year's Titan GT77 with the 12900HX. For now, it only has to play second fiddle to the new 2023 Titan that my colleague Andreas is testing right now as well. I will link his written article in the caption below. 
In the XMG, the 24 core chip can sustain absolutely stable performance throughout our testing at around 120 watts, as shown by our Cinebench 15 loop that we still use for those kinds of tests to have comparable data. While you enjoy some additional benchmark scores compared to last year's flagship notebooks, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more coverage about Intel's 13th gen coming very soon. With all of that out of the way, it's time to talk about the GPU in this guy. Is the laptop 4090 worthy of the name? While it has of course nothing to do with its desktop sibling it's sharing its name with, it is for sure the fastest notebook GPU you can currently get your hands on. And it should be, since even the upgrade from a 4080 on XMG's website for the Neo 16 is over 600 euros alone. The new mobile RTX card can run with up to 175 watts within the compact Neo 16 chassis. And in our combined 3 dmark performance rating is playing very confidently in desktop level performance territory, trading blows not only with the last gen 3090 Ti, but also with the latest 4070 Ti, giving you some serious graphical horsepower on the go. Ray tracing performance in 3 dmark Sport Royal is also seriously impressive propelling the chip only barely behind the last-gen desktop flagship. Before we get into our gaming benchmarks, let's have a look at some content creation scores. Since the 4090 is a very expensive SKU and will be paired with some very high-end designs as well, it will very much cater towards a more professional crowd, for whom it is much easier to justify the costs when using this one as a mobile workstation. Kicking things off with a bang in Blender, compared to last year's 3080 Ti, the ADA flagship can cut render times in half and can again outperform even the desktop RTX 4070 Ti, if not by that much. Additional good news for the traveling 3D artist, if you are more anchored in the Octane pipeline, the 4090 can again almost double the render performance in Octane Bench of its last gen sibling and sits atop the 4070 Ti in this test once more. Of course, I also had to take the Neo 16 for a spin for a video editing workflow. While I didn't have that much time to test the card in detail, timeline performance with our Blackmagic 6K RAW files have been smooth sailing so far, and video render times can shave off some precious minutes from last year's models as well. But enough about work for now, let's finally get into some games. Before we get into our individual gaming benchmarks at different resolutions, let's compare the 4090 against the competition. In our standard baseline benchmark suite, the Neo 16 can again sit very comfortably at the top, only barely below the new MSI Titan GT 77. And in general, the new CPU and GPU combo can score up to 50% more performance compared to what was available last year. By the way, be sure to subscribe so you will not miss the full review coming for the new Titan really soon. In Full HD, the 4090 barely breaks a sweat and can easily handle everything you throw at it. Given the numbers we see here, we can only hope that not too many manufacturers will pair this beast of a card with a 1080p panel, especially since our QHD benchmarks show that more often than not, the CPU, as fast as it may be, is the limiting factor here. So it's probably a good thing that XMG equipped the Neo with a super fast QHD panel, since it's a very good fit for the mobile ADA flagship. We barely see numbers below 100 FPS, and if you factor in that we ran these tests at the highest possible settings and without DLSS or the like, there is definitely some headroom to get even higher numbers. Should you own an external screen or TV you like to game on, the 4090 is also able to handle games in 4K easily. Even the most demanding games on the market right now can easily get above 60 FPS, so you can enjoy smooth gameplay in most games here once more. Ray tracing is of course always something that is handled very well with Nvidia cards. And the 4090 is really dialing things up to 11 this year. In Full HD and with the highest settings including full ray tracing and without any help from any upscaling tech, the Neo 16 can again easily deliver above 60 FPS in most titles. Sometimes even with enough headroom to switch things up to even the native QHD Plus resolution. Talking about DLSS, the mobile RTX 4090 is of course also the first laptop GPU that supports the third iteration with support for frame generation. And with this tech you can seriously forget all setting and resolution limitations. 
While DLS is free, Alone allows you to take advantage of the highest setting levels once again, but in 4K this time around, frame generation kicks things comfortably into super smooth frame rates, sometimes almost doubling FPS numbers. While the implementation in games in general is still limited as of now, I'm pretty sure that we will see more developers jumping on board to support the tech. As a little disclaimer, I am not a pixel people. So there might be some folks out there doing a frame by frame analysis, revealing some artifacts here and there in some games. But during my time testing with the Neo 16, there was no noticeable difference between frame generation and only using DLSS. But if you are someone who pays attention to the little things, your results may vary. Alright folks, it's about time we wrap this up. While the 4090 is an easy recommendation when it comes to performance, I mean the benchmark results speak for themselves, we also have to factor in the question of value. The Neo 16 hour sample configuration will cost you a cool 4200 euros, which is quite steep. That said, some other high-end 4090 laptops can easily cost a thousand bucks more. I will not say that the new chip offers good value, but if you are someone who wants to stay mobile, likes to game at the highest possible frame rates or the highest settings, and if you are a creative professional and need that much performance in an easily transportable package, the new hardware for this year has a lot to offer. In case of the Neo 16, even though this is a pre-production sample, I don't have too much stuff to complain about. I like the clean and understated design and while it's not the thinnest 16 inch notebook on the market, it rides the fine line between portable and thick enough to allow for adequate cooling. And with the Oasis, you can transform this guy into one of the fastest mobile machines out there as of now. That would be it from me today. If you feel like you need more info about what came out today, the team has been hard at work to get you more than one review on launch day. And I will link to all of our finished written reviews in the caption below. Please be sure to drop all of your additional questions in the comments below. And if you like what we are doing here and you felt entertained, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.